Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. We got two archaeology study Bibles: the Archaeological Study Bible from Zondervan and the ESV Archaeological Study Bible. And I wondered, were they kind of the same thing? I remember years ago when the Archaeological Study Bible first came out, I got it. It only came out in NIV. I was like, oh man, you guys know if you watch, I really like the King James Version. I think it's the Word of God. And then they eventually came out with it. In in the KJV. This is the KJV. Usually, I mean, if you come out with a Bible, you might as well come out with it in the KJV because it's not copyrighted here in the States. So, now, both these Bibles would be coming from what I would, excuse me, look at as a uh, new evangelical perspective in that, you know, they're going to think... They're just going to kind of blindly take that there was the Neolithic age before 4004 BC and, and things such as that. But uh, they both also have some amazing confirmations of Scripture. Archaeology, properly interpreted, is the Bible's friend. It is the most archaeological confirmed book from all of antiquity. And it really helps you see through many studies, I know Dr. Bill Cooper, others, that things like the Atrahasis Epic and the Enuma Elish and uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh would all be corruptions of Scripture. And they wouldn't just be all part of this ancient Near Eastern literature of mythologies to be taken equally, but that they would uh, actually be based on the book of Genesis. So let's just cut right to it. We're just going to do this quick comparison. I've done videos on both these individually. So now we'll see what they look like. It's always fascinating to me how people spell archaeological. Both these have it A-E-O, but a lot of times you'll see it E-O without the A in there. So just kind of giving you a feel for what's going on in this. To me, the Archaeological Study Bible from Zondervan has a, a little more full color feel to it that kind of thing and uh, now another one in this genre that you may really enjoy is the cultural background study Bible the cultural background study Bible I'm just going to show you some things before we get into the uh, Bible itself they're going to have some things ESV, we'll just show you this. But a lot of confirmations like, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. This is not going to be from a liberal perspective like uh, uh, Oxford Annotated, New Oxford Annotated, NRSV, those type things. It is going to be from what is called conservative now, but more like a fuller theological conservative, a Biola conservative, not a uh, Indiana Bible College conservative and this type thing. So just a little different there. But both are going to have just amazing amounts of information. Like Genesis. Look at this introduction to Genesis in the ESV study Bible. I really like how they did the ESV study Bible. And then this is uh, the introduction to Genesis in the archaeological study Bible. You know, if you can afford it, I'd get both. <laughs> Because archaeology, and if you can't, I mean, get like uh, Holden and Geisler's book on archaeology. Absolutely amazing. It's got more information. I don't see how anybody could read that book and doubt the inspiration of the scriptures and the 100% belief of the scriptures. But this is going to have just a little more in it, obviously. Now, you know, just as far as reading, the print's a little small, the commentary's real small, and then it's going to have a lot of what's called bleed-through just because of the different colors all throughout it. It's basically the gold. 
and uh, so we're going to take you a, a journey through the ESV study Bible in that respect as well see which one maybe has the best print but this has like colored headbands it's thick Bible I would say the ESV archaeology Bible may be just a tad less thick be pretty difficult probably to take this to church with you. They were just running these on sale at CBD. I think they were $18.99 or something at one time. So now this is just well let me just show you this. This is just a good good thing. Reference to text. So like I could see somebody that teaches archaeology in uh, college like I used to teach archaeology in college. I still do a little bit. I teach uh, Christian evidence is one and two, but archaeology is just a component of that. And uh, But this has just got amazing stuff in one spot. It's also got a thing, let me see if I can find it really quick, about uh, daily life and Bible times. Oh, it's, it's there. Daily life and Bible times, just amazing. Great stuff. Um, Hebrew calendar compared to the Gregorian calendar. I mean, they're both just going to be loaded. It's, it's very difficult for me to make a definitive decision because just when I'm like I'll be in like the ESV archaeology and I'll be like that's amazing but then I'll be in the NIV archaeology and I started like at the beginning in the NA, in the uh, Zondervan archaeology and just started reading it and I got to Exodus part Exodus and then I've just going to other stuff. Now, the ESV is much easier to read both in the text and in the commentary. Show you that pages side by side. But again, you know, like I'm saying, okay, so the text is easier to read, but it doesn't come in King James, and I'd prefer it to come in King James, obviously. And the notes are easier to read, but then on the same page, you've got this amazing bit of archaeological finds just incredible now let's go uh, to the middle of the Bible so let's see if either one of them has anything in the middle of the Bible a lot of times you may have a study Bible and if you've never gone to the middle of the Bible there's a lot of study helps in there sometimes um, we were doing a Bible review the other day and for some reason I forget why they had all these study helps in Psalms and it wasn't like necessarily for Psalms it was just study helps general I was like why did they put all that in the Psalms who would ever find that okay so the ESV study Bible yes is going to have a lot between the Bible, between the Testament, excuse me. And let's see about the NI, I mean the KJV archaeological, the Zondervan archaeological, the archaeological study Bible. Boy, that's about the Seleucia. You know, uh, Daniel 10 and 11, that's one thing I've just really wanted to, to study. I've, I got MacArthur hoping he would lead me through it a little bit but uh who knows didn't work out so good so we're in zechariah we're in malachi as they call him the malachi the italian prophet there is nothing in between uh in the uh archaeological study bible so it is red letter let's see if the asv is red lettered ESV is in fact not red lettered not red lettered but you can just see I mean it is just much easier to read just the print size just everything about it not only in the biblical text but also in the commentary just much easier to read now let's see too what they've got in the back a lot of times Bibles like this tend to put a lot of information in the back. 
Man, that is just amazing. Christian sarcophagus at Iconium. Wow. That's unbelievable. Because that's, you know, I mean, that's just incredible. Cultural and historical, the legend of the needles eye gate. See, that's just good stuff. Okay, so it's going to have a short history of archaeology in the Near East. It's going to have a glossary of terms. That's the reason I said this ESV archaeological archaeology study Bible would be an ideal college textbook. I'm thinking about maybe doing it for a Christian evidences class, a textbook for Christian evidences. But I, at the same time, we're so pro King James. I'm not sure it'd go over <laughs> the ESV archaeology. Um, you know, maybe just tell people, just study the notes. We're going to look at the notes. We're not going to look at the text so much. I've done a lot of videos like comparing the King James with the ESV. And uh, I, I, it's not so much so often the translation of the ESV. I think Leland Riken really um, gave them uh, a good KJV basis, really. Because he was saying, if we're going to have a study Bible, it's going to be timeless, or translation is going to be timeless. We're, it's going to have to sound a lot like the King James. And so he really did that. He was a literary editor, Leland Riken. But it's just a text. And I do find it fascinating that the Gideons publish a uh, ESV from the Textus Receptus, basically. So that's interesting. I've done a review on that. But a lot of people don't know. I didn't know until I was at the doctor's office with my mother and father-in-law and <laughs> reading the, the Bible. I was like, the CSV's got that. And uh, I think that's where it was. And so then I called um, Gideon's and said, could you send me one? Oh, and I was in a hotel and saw the same thing. If I remember correctly, this has been a few years ago. And so I call Gideon's. I said, I've really got to have this Bible. It, you know, I'll pay for it. Send me one. And they said, just take that one. That's what it's there for. I'm like, that's not stealing. They said, we just gave you permission. Just take it. So I took it. And I've done a review on it. So now the Zondervan archaeological is just going to have the basic Zondervan maps. The ESV... See, ESV was basically, you know, Crossway Publishers. Crossway did Frank Peretti books and tracts. It was good news publishers for years. I just bought a bunch of tract wallets from them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give them out to the leaders of our church filled with tracts. I just got a church stamp and going to stamp it. And so that way they can carry church tracts with them wherever they go. I'm a real big believer in tract ministry. So, you know, they didn't have a lot of Bible resources till they came out with the ESV. The ESV is based on the RSV. A lot of people don't know that. I had a big King James guy email me the other day. So this has 30. And say, did you know this? I'm like, yep. Yeah. Obviously, you didn't watch the review we've done on the ESV. So, and that's okay. He's a good friend. I don't watch my reviews. I, you know, that's bad. My wife doesn't want Nobody watches. But God's good. We're just trying to spread the gospel. And, uh, I mean, somebody does. Because you're probably watching. Or you wouldn't be hearing me talk like that. So... Here we go. We do just want everybody to fall in love with the Bible. So properly interpreted, both these Bibles are going to be extraordinarily beneficial for proving the Bible. And I, I hear so many statements. I don't know where they're coming from. People say, we can't prove the Bible. I'm like, sure you can. I, I don't know what you even mean by that. I'll show you the relative size here. They're almost identical in size. The uh, Zondervan archaeological feels thicker to me, but empirically it may be just slightly thicker, like an eighth of an inch. We'll let you see what it looks like, you know, this way as well. I mean, they're just almost identical in size. But yeah, the Bible's eminently provable 
And that's the reason I believe the Bible. Everybody says, well, you have to believe it on faith. I understand you have to believe it on faith. But even the New Testament Christians, they would preach with evidences that uh, Christ, who's evidently risen among you with evidence. So it's two and a half inches versus two inches. Yeah, it's probably a half inch. I'll just let do both at the same time. You can see that the ESV study Bible archaeology Bible is um, thinner than the archaeological study Bible. So, you know, I hate to leave people hanging not recommending one above the other. Uh, I mean, I guess if it just had to, you know, I may lean by... I, slight percentage point toward the ESV archaeological but they're both going to have wonderful things in them just believe the word it's a hundred percent true don't believe what you hear in the world because uh, Satan is the god of this world little g god of this world and he's trying to deceive you but truth is where it's at live in truth God bless I love you in Jesus name